It's three o'clock in the morning, right in the middle of the night shift. We've got a 50 odd year old fella in the recess room having a full blown heart attack. The only thing we're waiting for is the cardiology team to rock up so they can take him to the cath lab and take care of the problem. Go in and have a look what artery is blocked, what are they going to do, balloon it, stent it. Whatever the case might be, they're going to work it out. Vital signs are fine. He's talking to us. We're giving him pain relief. We've given all the medications that he needs to have in the lead up to the procedure. So we're having a good old chat for the 15, 20 minutes that he's with us. And uh, he's telling me all about, you know, his plans. He's going to lose some weight. He's going to stop smoking, stop drinking alcohol. He's going to start going to a, a local uh, a mountain here. We call it Mount Lofty. It's a very popular trail that people walk to lose weight. This man's telling me all about it. He's going to lose all this weight. He's going to get right. I don't know how many times I've heard people talk about this in these types of moments. And I honestly don't know why we need a near-death freaking experience to pull our finger out. Why do we need to push shit so far before we change? Why do we push it that far? So you need a stent before you stop smoking and drinking. So that's, that's the sign for you. Mate, you've done irreversible damage. Irreversible damage. You can't reverse a stent. You've, you, you've had a stent. Why are you still smoking? Why are you still drinking like a maniac? Why are you unfit? I'm thinking about squatting 300. You can't even climb a damn set of stairs. And now you're going to change your ways. The chances are, you're going to be like the rest of the world, January 1 comes, yeah, 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 I'm going to become the next Ronald, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Ronnie Coleman, that's me. Mate, seven, seven or 14 days after that stint, you're probably going to be like, oh, I'll skip today. Ah, I had a good session yesterday. And then that day becomes two days, three days, four days. Then you have a, a bit of a puff because you've had a stressful day at work. I'll, have a, I'll go to the pub with the boys and, you know, it's been a stressful day at work. I'll have a drink or two. Back to your old ways. How many times have you seen people break up, divorce, long-term relationships, break up? And what do people do? Go to the gym, they get right, they start getting fit, they lose all this weight, they become sexy again. Why do, they, why do people have to push it to the... You, so you need to break up before you get attractive again. If you got attractive in the, in the toughest moment of that relationship, the chances are you probably still be together. The sex will probably con re re no, continue or, or, or get back on, on, on the chessboard. But no, no, how many times have you seen that? Oh, I've just recently broken up with my boyfriend. I'm going to the gym 14 times a week. <laughs> I've stopped smoking. I've stopped drinking. I'm good now. What wake-up call do you need, man? What is it? Do you want a heart attack? No worries, man. Push it. See you when you're 50. I'll be at work. I'll be doing a night shift. I'll see you there. And I'll listen to another case... Another sorry ass case of, of a guy who's telling me I'm going to change my ways now. How about you get fit now and we don't have to have that chat in the ER. We can have a chat in the gym. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.